into this debate with Hassan Piker and Pierce Morgan and uh, a couple of other cringe guests, uh, but there are some interesting points that are made uh, during this debate. And I, this really cracks me up. It says, you're effing terrorists. If you guys have not seen this exchange, this is probably the most tense debate I've seen on Pierce Morgan's show. Uh, Cause Hassan went on there and he kind of just, he went off basically to make a long story uh, short here. We're gonna get started with this question here about whether or not the Gaza protests are performative. So let's get started at this point here. Um, absolutely not. I don't think that, I mean, all protests are technically performative, obviously, but there's a very clear cut goal for uh, the, the group of students at Columbia and many other universities. Uh, I was in Melbourne not that long ago and I attended a Palestinian protest there, a Palestinian rally there, and the students there were also demanding the exact same thing, that they divest, their colleges divest from uh, a lot of the companies that are aligned with the state of Israel, a lot of the companies that are directly involved uh, in, uh, in operations in the West Bank, a lot of the companies that are playing a role in the regular maintenance of the apartheid regime of Israel and uh, in helping Israel conduct an ethnic cleansing campaign. That is the ultimate goal. That is why they're trying to very clearly uh, cause a little bit of a disruption and engage in. But are you comfortable? OK, but are you comfortable? The most American thing you can do. Are you comfortable with the ones who are seen chanting support for Hamas or chanting about Intifada? So again, uh, we're going to change the name of Pierce Morgan show from Pierce Morgan Uncentered to Pierce Morgan Interrupted, because every time someone is making a solid point that actually goes against the state of Israel, there's a lot of interruption on the show. And you'll see that through this discussion as well. So Pierce Morgan is trying to bring it back in, reel it back in, and he's going to try to get Hassan Piker here to admit that what happened on October 7th was a bad thing, right? This is what he's going to try to get him to do. Watch this. Um, I am perfectly comfortable uh, with people chanting about the Intifada. As far as the Hamas thing goes, uh, the, any, any kind of protest is always going to have a litany of random people, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. You have to look at the actual tangible goals that the protest movement is stating they are interested in. And I think that those goals, and I think you will agree with me on this, Piers, I think those goals are pretty, pretty valid overall. I think that they want to, one, recenter the attention to the genocide that is ongoing in Gaza, and two, uh, demand that their tuition dollars do not go to uh, operations in Israel. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a, there's a campus. Uh, there's going to be a sister campus that uh, is being built in Tel Aviv right now for Columbia University. I told you guys, I told you that Columbia University was known as a Zionist, right? It's known as a Zionist institution. I told you. This means that Columbia University, which once housed the likes of the late great Edward Said and many others, and ma that currently has many Palestinian students who pay tuition for projects such as this one, will not be able to go to that sister campus. I find that abhorrent, but it's everyday existence right. in Israel. Let me bring in. Let me bring in Emily. Uh, you've been listening to all this. Your response. With all due respect, Hassan, why do you feel that Columbia or any college, for that matter, owes you? to divest from Israel. Why do you think your opinion is correct? Because so far, I heard the classic buzzwords, apartheid, discriminatory, ethnic cleansing, and genocide, which is funny because it's all the exact opposite. So if- Pause. So do you guys see what's happening now? Now the word apartheid is considered to be a buzzword, right? Not real. Apartheid applied to South Africa, but when it comes to the state of Israel, that is a buzzword. This is not a real thing. And this is why some of the, the press outlets refuse to use the words apartheid, occupation, and oppression. Because if you continue to say it and you use it enough, people will start to repeat it and it starts to sink in and then people see it as true. But in this case, it is true. So they knew not to use those words. And if they did use those words, they used it in such a way that said the pro-Hamas supporters 
are stating that Israel is an apartheid state. So they frame it in such a way to make it seem like the protesters are the ones that are in the wrong and they don't know what they're talking about. She'll continue to lie. I may ask you, what about Israel is apartheid? <laughs> you also just said the students in Israel, um, the canvas in Israel would not allow Palestinians to join. Are you confused or do you know nothing about the country of Israel? Because let me remind you, Jews are not allowed in the West Bank and Gaza. However, Arabs have full Israeli citizenship, have the rights, are members of the Knesset, which is the equivalence of, you can think of Congress, and even prosecuted a former prime minister, Ehud Olmer, an Arab judge. So what apartheid exactly are you speaking about? What genocide, what ethnic cleansing? Which, and which secondly, you, how you dare you, as how dare you say it's okay to talk about an intifada. Let me remind you, the intifada last time it happened in Israel consisted of thousands of people dying in bus bombing. So are you saying that you support terrorism and killing innocent people? So do you see how she framed that? And it's the same way that Pierce Morgan has been framing the argument as well, right? They basically say that anything that you say that's negative about Israel is a lie. Then they ask for you to prove it. Then when you try to prove it, they constantly interrupt you. Everybody is lying about Israel. Did you guys know this? All the human rights organizations are apparently lying about Israel. Everybody is lying about Israel. Even though they have data to prove what they're talking about, right? So watch this. Well, Intifada simply just means revolution, and I'm an American, and in 1776, violent, violent we did revolution. one of those, and it was pretty fucking good. Yeah. What do you think? The American, okay. do you we think the American bombed, revolution was a particular party? We also bombed Hiroshima. We also don't, bombed don't, Hiroshima. Don't, don't, yeah, I know, and that was also unjust and unimaginably cruel, but of course. Pause, and I'll let him finish. Sorry to interrupt him there, but this is important. Notice she brought up the Hiroshima Notice she brought up the Hiroshima point. That's the same talking point that Ben Shapiro used in the video we were discussing last night. I told you that it's a network of Zionists. They all repeat the same talking points. So now it has been passed along through this whole PR system that they have. Let's bring up Hiroshima. Not realizing that's not a winning point, man. That's not a good, good example. Because a lot of people today don't think that's okay. That's the thing. And just because something happened in the past doesn't mean it's okay to do it again today. You're supposed to look at the past and you're supposed to learn from it. And you're supposed to grow and move on from the history. You're not supposed to repeat and make the same mistakes that you made in the past that were obviously problematic. Of course, the Israel defender so is also when defending it fits, when it nuking fits your narrative, civilians so when it fits and killing them by the hundreds of thousands. Now, listen, so when it fits listen, your let's get back. It's let's justified, get back. But when it goes let's against refocus it, the conversation to the points that you made. Let's refocus so the conversation no, okay, to the okay, points that you okay, made. Okay, you said, uh, just to remind everybody, about? I'm actually moderating this. But that's an interesting point that Emily just raised, Hassan. It does seem that you're very selective about the violence that you support. That when you support it, it's justified. When other people use things in a violent way that you don't support, it's unjustified. Seems like it's all skewed to what Hassan Piker yeah. thinks. <laughs> well, not necessarily just what I think. I think that there are obvious markers, obvious boundaries. I don't think violence against civilians is justified. I have talked about October 7 on this very same show, saying that it was a tragedy. It was atrocities that occurred on October 7, specifically. Uh, when you target civilians in any capacity, I think that that is unacceptable. However, this does not mean that violence will not occur in many circumstances. Violence has occurred in every single revolutionary action, many good revolutionary actions. Obviously, America bombing Hiroshima and Nagasaki with uh, with an atom bomb, uh, that was not a very was good moment Was what Hamas did on uh, October the 7th. Anybody. It was a, not a very good moment for human civilization at all. Was what Hamas did on October the 7th. The point. What, what, was what Hamas did on October the 7th an example of what you would call a justified revolution? So do you see what they're doing now? Didn't Hassan Piker just say to them that he didn't agree with what happened on October 7th? So now this is where Pierce comes in to dive in a little bit deeper and try to get him to admit that what Hamas did was wrong. Do you see how this works? 
They literally sandwich Hassan in between the two people who are supporting the state of Israel. They put him in the middle. He's the meat. They're the bread. I don't look at every single act of violence. I look at you've literally players. just been I reciting a whole lot of systems of oppression. Why are you avoiding, why are you avoiding you October the 7th? You do it too. No, I don't. I'm not avoiding it. I've talked about okay. it a million times. Well, over. let me ask you I, one I, more time. Hang on. Hang this on. Not what let, we're Emily, hang on. Not what we're Hassan, let me she just ask you. Let me just ask you directly Israel's one more time. Let me ask you one more time. Do you believe what happened on October the 7th was a justified act of revolution? Yes or no? I do not. And I do think that I, oh, wait, hold on. That's, uh, let, me, let me clarify. Let me clarify something very important here. At events that unfolded on October 7 were atrocities. That much is clear. Those atrocities could have been avoided if Israel was not an apartheid regime. Israel has been an apartheid okay, regime for 75 years. Can you answer how Israel is an apartheid regime? Early... keep repeating. Pause. So you see what's happening here? So they got Hassan to admit that he does not agree with what Hamas did on October 7th. But then when he goes on to explain that that would not have happened had Israel not occupied the Palestinian people, oppressed the Palestinian people, and then also, of course, implemented apartheid. This would have never happened. You would have never had a Hamas. This is what he's trying to say. Now, once he starts to explain the history and what Israel has done that led to October 7th, that is when the interruption occurs. So now she swoops in. We'll call her Zionist Barbie. She swoops in here, and then she wants him to define what he means by apartheid. Anything to silence the truth about Israel. No, you can't you just chime that. in. You can't just chime in. You ask evidence. me a question. You want it? Why you ask is me a question. An I'm going to give you regime. an answer. Because you're repeating Israel these has lies. been an apartheid Go regime ahead, since please. its inception. Until so? until 1967, Israel was an apartheid regime for the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the Arabs, as you called them. They were there was a two tier criminal justice system. They were subjected to the military court processes and not the civil court processes until 1967. After 1967, they got citizenship. There are obviously still many different social issues that pertain to the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the Arabs that are living in Israel, uh, those who are not Jewish, of course. Um, however, Israel currently is occupying the West Bank. There are yep. more than 2 million Palestinians that live in the West Bank. Israel is illegally occupying the West Bank. There are checkpoints. There are uh, license plates where, where that restrict Palestinian travel. The, the uh, Israeli operations in the West Bank have destroyed Palestinian statehood. Now, of course, all of this is readily available for those who want to learn about it, yourself included. I hope you look it up. But Selim is an Israeli human rights organization which declared Israel to be an apartheid regime in 2021, in the April of 2021. Amnesty International declared Israel okay. to be an apartheid right, let me, regime. Let me, okay, before so I did. move... So he's starting to give sources that declared Israel to be an apartheid state. And once again, so now it's Pierce's turn to come in and interrupt. Again, they ask for data. They ask for sources. They, they're asking you to define it. And then when you start to break it down and you start to give a little too much information, then it's time for them to come in and to interrupt. So Hassan is basically dropping facts here. And listen, I don't agree with Hassan on everything, you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't agree on still supporting the Democratic Party, but I do agree with him on Israel and, and Gaza when it comes to this issue. So I think the thing is, is like they're taking turns. First, it's Zionist Barbie. Then comes Ken's dad. We're going to call Pierce Ken's dad. Ken's dad comes in and they're taking turns to interrupt him so that too much information about Israel is it doesn't get out. We've seen this with every person that comes onto the show that is on the pro Palestinian side. They do the same thing with Norm Finkelstein and Norm Finkelstein knows a lot about this and goes into great detail. They've done this before. I think Crystal Ball was recently on there. Like everyone that comes on to argue that point, they do this with them. Okay, you know so hang on, did, hang, on hang on, hang on. Before we, I, we, I just want to bring in our two British panelists here, but just finally, just to clarify, Hassan, I can't quite work out whether you said you do think October the 7th was an unjustified act of revolution or whether you change your mind. So can you clarify? See? I think that violent means of maintaining an apartheid is inevitably going to yield violent retaliation. So this was it was it justified? Is something that is completely avoidable. Was it justified? 
Civilian deaths are never justified. You know what, Hassan? Hang, hang on, my, Emily. You look, hang on, Emily. You look hurt. Emily. You guys see this? See how they take turns? So he said civilian deaths are not justified. We literally have a whole Mattel series here, guys. We can go down the line. We have Ken's dad, which is Pierce Morgan. You have Hassan. Hassan is not Ken. Hassan is Ken's friend. There was a, a collection of them called Barbie and the Rockers, right? And so Ken had a friend, a rocker Ken, that had the dark, the dark hair. So Hassan is Ken's friend. Then you got Zionist Barbie here. The woman next to her, this is Christy. Christy was the black Barbie doll. At that time when I was growing up, there was only one black Barbie doll and her name was Christy. So this is Christy and that's Ken here at the end. Let's continue. Goldberg, Poland's mother in the eyes. No, you look this person's mother in the eyes and you tell him that this was justified. You tell him his arm being blown off and being held in captivity for 200 I do, days is I do love that the, the, the Israel defender has no capacity to fucking hear anything to I'm saying. What are you talking identity? about? It just... If you're not going to respect me you and listen to what I have to say, which, by the way, of course you don't respect. Gaza. Oh, if you talk over each other, nobody can hear you. I just want to give Hassan. I think it's the entire Hassan. world knows. No, it is okay? you. Hang think. on, Hassan. 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 Emily, please. Let me handle this, Emily. Hassan, just before I come to the, the two uh, people who are with me here, I just, I just need some clarity here because it seems like you're dancing around whether you think October the 7th Here's, was justified or not. Why are we doing not. this? Why are we doing this back and forth masturbation? I've already given you yeah, my Pierce, fucking position. Why are you doing this? It's, I'm He's sick happy. and tired it's of Jews repeating it over and over again. Okay, I just ask Jews, this, it's okay. Ask this Emily, demon next to me. Where are they? Fucking I'm IDF dog you. tag. Only when it's Jews, it's okay. Please ask stop this fucking demon other. next to me wearing an IDF dog tag if she actually thinks Israel's no, actions are justifiable. Bring them home. Do you it's see me the rocking the fucking... The, the hostages all right, that you right believe, it doesn't matter. Right. You know Tunnels what it is. Gaza. I'm going to give you two... Yeah. I'm going to let you two that calm down. It's pointless. We cannot hear you You're when you talk over each other. Control people. Every time recently I have... Some <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because the two at the end here, they're just kind of like... <laughs> Oh my God! Come on, from both sides on, like it goes like this. I'm wearing this rusty necklace. Please, can you listen to me, Emily? Civilians yeah, 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 yeah. in Gaza right. right now. Can you stop do doing this to each hey, other, please? Emily, nobody Emily, can, nobody Emily, can understand can a word either of you saying. Now let me come to Esther and James here. This is one of my problems. No, I want to hear if Emily condemns no, the no, actions Hassan, of Israel. Hassan, you will please let me moderate that? the debate. Why do you ask about 30,000 people? I've got two panelists here who've not had a word yet. Because you're a fucking terrorist. Please stop talking. And I think. Hassan called her a terrorist. So there was that part. You're a terrorist. Emily. And I think you're a terrorist yeah. as well. Okay, well, I'm not the one wearing... Because I'm until the, the hostages are home, the, the, don't the expect the war to be signia. over. Yeah, I know. Bring you don't care about home. the hostages. If you I care love about the hostages, you're condemning you would be you screaming at Benjamin Netanyahu. Your own terrorism Benjamin on live Netanyahu television. is the hostage you killer. You are exposing... You know, Benjamin Netanyahu me, you has killed more Hamas. hostages what than Hamas. Hamas. You need to be thing you're achieving Hamas here. For not only oppressing the Palestinian people, but for spreading terrorism. I don't see your outrage at Hamas. Israel gave Gaza right, back listen, in 2005, I would like to, please. and Hamas has turned it into a please. terrorist haven. Emily and Hassan, can you think about what she just said. Israel gave Gaza back. They should have never stolen it in the first place. So this is another Zionist talking point as well, trying to blame the people who are oppressed for their own oppression. <laughs> we have to get past this talking point. You can't sit up there and kick people out of their homes and off their land and expect them to be, oh, just okay with what you did to them and just go along to get along, folks. And the fact that you locked them into this open air prison, the people can't just move about freely. And then you have the illegal settlements in the West Bank. Now, one of the things that she said is that Jewish people are not allowed to go in the West Bank. Let's show you something. We'll come back to this. I want to show you something because the amount of lies that they tell. Watch this. Check this. OK. Who are Israeli settlers and why do they live on Palestinian land? Let's go down to this point right about here. Who are the settlers? Settlers are Israeli citizens who live on private Palestinian land in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. Occupied. The vast majority of the settlements have been built either entirely or partially on private Palestinian land. 
You cannot forget this. More than 700,000 settlers, 10% of Israel's near 7 million population, now live in 150 settlements and 128 outposts dotting the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem. We can also not sit here and forget the fact that it was just a month or two ago we discussed on this show that it was revealed that Israel was selling homes here in the United States and in Canada. They were hosting events to sell homes in the West Bank to Israeli Americans right here. So many lies that they continue to tell. We'll come back in here. The lesser evil in fantasy Israel. Hamas to is the, other the lesser evil in comparison to Israel. Can you please stop talking, both of you, you and let me? the other two panelists have you a say? Sound bite, Pierce? I'll give give you them a sound some bite. courtesy. Please, some courtesy for your co-panelists here. Now, Esther, this is one of the problems I have with this whole debate, is that increasingly yeah. we, it just descends into a screaming match between pro-Palestinians and pro-Israelis. And the biggest losers are the, biggest, are the victims no of this respect. war. 33,000 dead Palestinians, over 1,500 dead Israelis. These, these are the biggest victims of this because you're shouting at each other and nothing is getting, like you, you're completely, forget having no courtesy for us. You're completely disrespecting actual victims of this conflict, which by the way, didn't happen in a vacuum. And I think that's the most important thing to say about this. None of this happened in a vacuum. Of course, October the 7th was an atrocity and it was completely unjustified. There was no justification for butchering people in the way that it, they did, but it didn't happen in a vacuum. A lot of the people that live in Gaza weren't even, weren't even born at the time that, that, that Hamas came, over, uh, came in, in, in power. So I, I really just, I despise this, you're a terrorist sympathizer, you're a genocide supporter, all of this, when really the people that we should be talking about deserve better. Okay. James, on the wider point of these protests... Well, I couldn't get to that part because I wanted to describe what the apartheid is and okay. Emily cut in immediately to chirp about some random shit. Okay, uh, you were both <laughs> abusing each other. It was very unnatural. It was very let me, uh, let me ask James. James, on the protest... Yeah, dude. On the protest, um, no, I believe in, in the right to protest. It's an absolute bedrock of any democracy. But I don't believe in the right to support terror groups publicly or to chant about support for Hamas or to chant about Intifada, which is a violent uprising. Define terror groups, because basically what happens is whoever the United States government describes as a terrorist group is a terrorist group to other countries in the West. Does that mean that they actually are? And sometimes you'll look into the history and you'll see that the United States government actually created some of these groups. Oh, no. Think about that. We're all gonna sit here and hear this discussion and no one wants to bring up the fact that Netanyahu himself actually funded Hamas. <laughs> you complained about the group that your leader actually funded. Let's see, let's hear what Ken has to say. Where's the line for you with these? I agree, I think we have to condemn what Hamas did and I don't think the words that have been used so far have been strong enough. I mean, it was the worst thing we've seen in a very long time, it was disgusting appalling awful for everyone involved i also have a lot of sympathy if not i can't think of a bigger word for the people of gaza it's awful and i will agree with you i do want a free palestine and i also want a free and successful israel but i don't want innocent people murdered so yeah you pause because ken you know he trying to ride in the middle of the fence because he still want to be friends with barbie and he still got his other friend hassan so let me explain what's really happening here this statement that he said it's the worst thing that we've seen happen in a long time in reference to october 7th if that's true folks has he forgotten about the democratic republic of the congo we're talking about over six million people have been killed in the congo you have children working in the mines of the congo just so we can have rechargeable batteries in our cell phones so how is 12, the 1,200 people that were killed on October 7th, which some of those people were killed by the IDF, which they admit their self. How is that worse than the 6 million people that have been killed in the Congo? Make it make sense, folks. Okay, we debunked that part. You can't go to a protest and start shouting about support for Hamas. It, That's isn't insane. It, isn't it ironic that 
something like this has become a haven for like the mentally unwell. You're talking about something as serious as a conflict in, in Israel and Gaza. And for some reason, you have really uneducated people that are clearly, should, 80, like 20 years ago would have been in an asylum, supporting this openly, not knowing, not even knowing the conflict, not even knowing the, the context of what they're supporting. And for some reason, we, we even give it airtime. That's what upsets me. Because people, is, these people so don't deserve right? airtime. Everyone is. They don't deserve airtime. Then why are you on this show? <laughs> Come on, Christy. Come on, Christy. Fall back. Why are you on the show if you feel it doesn't deserve any type of airtime? <laughs> so triggered on both sides, on all sides, for and rightly so, because a lot of terrible stuff has happened. So that's where the emotion is coming from. But really, I think we all want the same thing, and that is for innocent people to not be murdered or slain in the streets. Right. I mean, look, Hassan. Uh, Good night. But Oh, hang on, Emily, something? please, I'll come yeah. to you. Let me just ask you, Sam. When, when you and Emily go at each other like you just did, nobody wins. I mean, no one can really understand a word you're saying because you're, you're shouting over each other. You end up just calling each other terrorists. There's no, there's no sensible dialogue here. There's no constructive conversation. It's just two no, implacably opposed mean, sides I mean, abusing each other. Do you understand that? Yeah, I listen, Piers, okay? This is going to always have, this is going to always be a very heated discussion, yeah. okay? Having a conversation about how heated this discussion is, is utterly unproductive. Every single moment that we use on air, not talking about every single, every single uh, university building being desecrated, destroyed. Uh, the fact that well, we're having this conversation on the eve of hundreds of mass graves being unearthed right now in in uh, many different parts of Gaza around hospitals that Israel had laid siege to is disgusting. I agree. I came on here, as I have done last time as well, and as I will probably do in the future as well, with one simple goal in mind, which is to address all of the misinformation that surrounds stuff like this. As far as the crackhead Barbie thing goes, yeah, she's a random TikTok influencer who gives a shit about what she has to say. She's obviously doing it for clout. But the students over at Columbia, OK, the students that I have talked to at the Columbia University Apartheid Divest group, the students that I've talked to from Jewish Voice for Peace. Um, all right, Emily, uh, l let me just ask you that part right there. There was something that happened here that was a little bit odd. Watch it again, guys, and make sure it's not just me that noticed it, because it seems like when they they obviously recorded this and it seems like once he mentioned Jewish Voices for Peace, Part of this was edited out. Why? She's a random TikTok influencer who gives a shit about what she has to say. She's obviously doing it for clout. But the students over at Columbia, okay, the students that I have talked to at the Columbia University Apartheid Divest group, the students that I've talked to from Jewish Voice for Peace. Um, all right, Emily, uh, let me. Uh, hello? Did somebody just cut him off after he said Jewish Voices for Peace? Was that like a hard edit? Okay, we're going to fast forward to another part here. I think we've had enough of um, Zionist Barbie. But there's a part here that I do want to get to where uh, Hassan actually, you know, Ken's friend starts to clash with Ken. This part right here people here James. if anyone okay. is using hostages surely it's hamas hassan how can you say that how can you how can you use that argument that's that's a crazy thing to say it's hamas what that mean, how can I have use taken these there people from their homes tens of thousands of people in their like, there are currently tens of thousands of israeli citizens right now in the pro uh, right now in the streets of israel in the streets of tel aviv outside of benjamin Netanyahu's house protesting every single day. What are they protesting? They're protesting for Benjamin Netanyahu to facilitate a ceasefire with Hamas so that they can actually bring the hostages home. That is precisely the but number one goal if the, of the family the members of the hostages. Who is and if using anyone the on this panel was no, being even a little question. bit honest, you, you they would recognize You're the reality that, question. listen, just listen. You didn't listen to my question. Listen to, listen to what I'm saying and you will understand perhaps what I'm trying That's to imply very patronizing. here. Uh, Utilizing the hostages. Yeah, I am being patronizing. I don't know who the fuck you are, and you're over here chirping, chirping all the way from fucking London about Palestine and doing a both sides are fucking fine type bullshit. <laughs> you 
do know who he is. He's your friend. That is Ken Hassan. That's your friend. You guys are bros and pals. <laughs> he said, you're over here freaking out about Palestine. <laughs> Shit, where, uh, you're talking about how you want to fucking free Palestine, but also simultaneously, you know, both sides got a lot, uh, a lot going on. Shut the fuck up. You don't know anything, okay? <laughs> I, I don't give a shit that. about what your perspective I said, uh, is. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Hassan doesn't like what you have to say, saying, so Hassan. you're wrong. It's not. It's Hassan's way or the highway. I mean, you wow, are. You really are. There is no both sides on a genocide. Is there a really both sides on a genocide? There is no both sides. Well, the, the thing is, is, it's there, interesting. You should is, mention the really? hostages. There what is, is in the both Hamas sides charter? And they want Hold Jewish on. genocide, but that's okay. But well, a Jewish is, genocide is. Okay. If you're talking about the well-being of the host, of, of, host, of, of if you're talking about the well-being of the hostages, what sense did it make for the IDF to flatten about seventy percent of Gaza? Because I completely agree. Thank Bring you. the hostages home. If you look oh. at Gaza, the topography of Gaza right now, it looks like a pancake. So I'm sorry, this whole argument of Hamas using them as human tools, fine, but the IDF has yeah, also I'd been like using it to continue that, that campaign. If you, if you were told that if, God forbid, if your, your relative was one of the hostages and you saw what's happening right now, and I met someone whose mother is a hostage, and he said he didn't want his mother and her being taken to be used in the name of violence. Right now, he's sitting at home wondering, okay, what is the logic of trying to bring my mother home when you flattened Gaza? Please explain that to us. That is probably one of the most based statements from this episode. And I think that's the first time I heard someone mention that in media, actually, because let's all continue to say that if they care so much about the hostages, what was the point of flattening Gaza? Because let's think about this. And I said the same thing in reference to the food. When Israel was blocking the humanitarian aid from coming into Gaza, they weren't just blocking food for the Palestinians. They were also blocking food and aid for the hostages. Whoops. But that shows you that once again, they didn't really care about those hostages, which I said from day one, did they care about the three hostages that they shot point blank that were waving white flags? Three hostages, white flags, surrendering, and they killed them. They don't care about those hostages. They didn't care about these people. If they cared that much about the hostages, they would have done everything that they could to get them back. And that's not what has been happening. We'll finish up here with Zaya. So, can I pull you the might, you might very well, You might very well pull those hostages from under Okay, this. let Emily respond to that. Everyone wants to criticize the IDF's response, but nobody wants to tell me what should Israel be doing to retaliate October 7th, eradicate Hamas from preventing another October 7th, and bring the hostages I have home. an idea. Have I have an idea. I have an idea. Do not flatten Gaza and potentially Please. pull your own hostages up from uh, under from rub uh, under the rubble, like have been done with thousands of Palestinians. That's a good idea. Yeah. Have you found any so of them you're under saying the that you don't have an answer. That is the answer. So you don't don't have kill an your answer. own hostages. But you're quick That's to condemn answer. the IDF, but How you don't sound? have an answer. How about an not answer killing the hostages? So that was, uh, we're not going to finish the whole thing, but if you want to watch this all on your own, uh, have at it. But that was a really interesting point there. Don't flatten Gaza because obviously that hurts the hostages as well. Um, but Emily's making the same like Zionist talking points. They all say the same thing. Their mask is off. You have been exposed. And many of us talked about this years ago. But I think that now, uh, con considering after October 7th, it is more it's more talked about, it's talked about more now, people are starting to see just how much Zionism has corrupted that region and just how much, and not just that region, also the United States and the politicians and APAC and the Israeli lobby, all of it mixed in together. People are starting to see how dangerous this ideology has become, that you have this supremacist ideology, that only you have this right to have this state that's just for your people. And anybody else that's present there, you have the right to take their homes, to kick them off the land. You know how dangerous this has become. And so the Zionists have nothing else better to do than to continue to tell lies on top of lies. So they've created a mountain of lies. I don't know how Hassan actually made it through that segment. I, I literally, I watched the entire thing and I was like, this is tough. <laughs> this is tough to watch.
much. <laughs> but interesting discussion there. Israel has been exposed, man. Definitely exposed. I'll take that comment on uh, Rumble, Eric, the Rumble rant. Thank you so much for that. All right. Thank you for the Rumble rant, Goo. The Ergun and Stern gang, who were the terrorist groups that targeted British and Arabs, eventually became the IDF. Well, damn. Thank you for this as well. Zion Barbie who needs to go easy on the Botox and needs skin cream for that oily face. Damn, Goo. Uh, IDF got hit by Hezbollah after they occupied a Palestinian Israeli Israeli, excuse me, community center, because they did not think Hezbollah would hit them as they stationed amongst Palestinian Israeli shields. Interesting. Thank you so much. We'll go to some of the comments here as well. Uh, Mr. 13 says, Sabby Sabs, you rock. Oh, thank you. And welcome. Shout out to Tia Wheeler says, Zion is Barbie. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Imagine if that was a cast of the real world. Remember MTV, the real world? Imagine if all those people lived in one house. Pick seven strangers. We'll say five. Five strangers to live in a house where things get totally unreal. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dwayne. Hassan uh, should have told Kabbalah Karen to lay off the lipogen. <laughs> you guys are bad. The lipogen, uh, Botox, and peroxide cocktail so she can think straight. Damn. And thank you, Norma Joe. I loved when two content creators I respect and follow cover each other's work. It's like a 12 inch remastered remix. Thank you for your work, Miss Sabrina. Thank you and welcome. 